This episode is brought to you by our friends at Hover, the easiest way to buy domain names and do more with them. Get 10% off today by visiting hover.com slash butterscotch. Andrew Moore Crispin here at CTIA 2011. I bumped into Jim, who's basically telling us that uh, CTIA is not only about the latest and greatest gadgets, it's also about the latest and greatest applications that actually help consumers on the latest and greatest gadgets. Absolutely. So here we have a, a basically a home automation system that is an entire kind of ecosystem. We have it running on the Zoom and as, as well as on a few other devices. Why don't you run us through kind of what we're, what we're really talking about here when we talk about home automation. Great. So Andrew, this is a platform that basically enables us to touch the connected home. So there's devices and there's products available today from technologies like Z-Wave and Zigbee. These are RF mesh technologies that allow you to control your thermostat and your door locks and your lights and appliances. Okay, so this is existing technology then? Exactly, there's existing technology that's out there, IP cameras, things like that. Right. There's also market for products that are actually coming down the pike as well, that'll be home health and that type of thing. Okay. But be able to leverage all the information that that, inf that technology has to offer. Not just from an information standpoint, but also from a control standpoint. Right. You mentioned the Zoom and running on the Zoom. The Zoom is a, is a great piece Piece of technology and it's a looking glass into that connected home so that I can pick up that zoom and if I've got it handy I can take control and turn on the room for example uh, I can reach over here and say I want to turn this room on I can say activate and it's using that technology to bring the lights on turn the heater on set the thermostat to an acceptable level I hope um, the heater's not on too high man because it's already heater, hot in here I've got the heater turned off because okay, as good. soon as it turns on it gets that kind of burning electronic smell right not good in the no, motor oil booth no, no. All right, so now, do we have to actually have, like, all of our, I mean, this is, looks like a pretty old-school heater. Does our, does our, do our devices have to have the technology, like, embedded into them, or how does that work? Well, that's actually a great question. You can actually start pretty simple. You can plug electronic and controllable devices into dimming devices, into energy management devices that are just modules. They can plug into the wall, and you plug into those. Now, that gives you very simplified, you know, functionalities. At most, you'd be able to dim a light. So this annoying light that's in our face right now, if I wanted to control that, I could click on devices and go to my lighting and just kind of set the level that I want that light to be. It's a little more sophisticated than turning it on or off, but right. not much. Um, you can also replace certain pieces of technology like your thermostat. If I want to control my thermostat, uh, it's right now in the automatic mode and, or the heat mode and I want to change it to the cooling mode, I could do that and the thermostat responds. If I wanted to change the set point for it, I can do that by raising and lowering different set points here and you see it respond here. So what I, we're really doing then is leveraging, I mean, you, you talked about like kind of that, that whole mesh concept where you have devices already talking to each other in the yeah. home. What we're really doing now is is making a control panel that runs, it can run on your smartphone, it can run on your TV, you said, it can run on uh, any piece of glass. Zoom. Very yeah, cool. absolutely. So the, it's the user interface. So the customer should have the option to choose whatever they want to use to interact with it. And that's and that's really the value proposition is what we're doing to, to make that happen. We've got some user interfaces we're showing here. The value proposition is it's a platform. We've got customers, I, I can't name them here, but all those guys are actually using APIs to develop on top of that. Right. So they're building their own interfaces, they're building their own drivers, services, all this stuff, and just plugging it right into that network and making it available so that anybody who's on that secured, authenticated network can now take advantage of all that information has to so offer. So is this something we can go out to a store and like buy in a box? Is it something we have to talk to an installer? Is it something we have to get like a wireless carrier? Like, How does this actually work? Like, assuming I'm sold, how do I actually get this thing? Well, it's a great question, and because I don't like to get mugged before I leave, we can't sell it directly to you. Okay. We can't give it to you or anything like that. We sell it through service providers and serve to the mass market. Telcos, wireless people, uh, the folks that are putting the power into your house, the utilities. Right. Those are the folks that actually we sell the service to because then they turn around and bundle it however they need to for their specific applications. Okay. So although I have it at home and you've got a card, so may maybe we'll get it to them. Oh, I don't sweet. know. <laughs> but uh, the software is really depend it, it decided to, to or determined to go to the mass market. It's de destined for the mass for the mass market. Mass, mass market, absolutely. Mass market, mass market, okay. One last question. Uh, you mentioned a, a kind of a use case uh, with a refrigerator door where you open your refrigerator door. Sure. To tell us about this one, because I think this is quite interesting. Well, uh, what I was doing is I was talking to you about the value proposition of application development. Um, we were talking about the Zoom and, and moving away from the idea that it's just one company making an application and software and down a deep, deeper level where it's actually a platform. Uh, think about two applications that a refrigerator door could bring because it's very different from the eyes of different developers. Right. You could start by saying, oh, if I open the refrigerator door and I'm diabetic, then the Zoom that's sitting on the kitchen cabinet will sound an alarm and open up and say, these are the only things that you're actually allowed to eat right now. Okay. Now, that's a home health application, and that could come from a completely different direction than, say, an application for advertising that may on your Zoom hide in the background, you know, by, by nature of who de delivered that product to your home. 
and then you're watching an NFL. It knows it's 6.30 at night. knows the guys are over. Their refrigerator has been open. More than 20 seconds, it's time to order pizza. So right. it puts a pizza or, you know, advertisement on your screen. Okay. So different people have different value propositions for something as simple as opening a refrigerator door. So you, you mentioned app, app developers. Is this something that like then we can take an app, an, an app from here and kind of integrate the whole thing and take this kind of, so basically pick and choose to get the solution that's actually going to work for, our, for the home. Is that yeah. the idea? Then? Well, not necessarily pick and choose, but basically what we're doing is we're allowing the folks that are developing against the Motorola platform to be able to access this kind of deeper layer of information that could be available okay. to them. So this information bus, as it were, of devices to be able to tap into those devices, control those devices, and get the information from those devices. Okay, very cool. So uh, where are we going for more information? Is there is there like a website that we can go and get more information on this whole home automation thing from Motorola, like happening by Motorola? Uh, Motorola.com slash for home. Okay, very cool. And for uh, links, all that great stuff, head up the show notes on butterscotch.com. Jim, thank you very much. Thank you. This episode is brought to you by our friends at Hover, the easiest way to buy domain names and do more with them. Get 10% off today by visiting hover.com slash butterscotch.